Hey everyone, it's Stephen Wagner with the Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. We're doing another video today covering Windows Server 2022. Today we'll be talking about Microsoft's certificate services. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to install a certification authority on the Active Directory domain controller that we installed in one of the previous videos. Now, some of you want might be asking me why would we want to do this and one of the purposes of this video is to actually go into Microsoft certificate services and I want to explain why you might want to implement this on a corporate network uh, the purpose of it what you can accomplish with it and then after that actually show you how to install it so to get started a this is perfect for a home lab user or someone that wants to get familiar with SSL certificates or Microsoft's certif certification authorities and certificate services. Um, now, when it comes to real world usage, this is where it actually becomes very important. A lot of you are very familiar with SSL certificates. When you surf a website, they use a certificate. When you access web applications, it uses SSL certificates for encryption and host verification. Now, when you get into business environments, uh, particularly domains, internal corporate networks might want to be able to issue certificates on their own. So for example, they don't want to go to Network Solutions or GoDaddy on a regular basis and pay $500 for a certificate that can only verify, you know, maybe four or five host names. Now on an internal network, corporations want to have the ability to issue these certificates for web services, for intranet websites, um, a lot of applications require these certificates used. And another big one too is that corporations that have HTTPS scanning or firewalls that scan secured web traffic, in order to do the interception, you have to be able to issue trusted certificate services. So for example, what you would need to do is on a domain, you'd install Microsoft, uh, you'd install a certification authority, which would allow you to issue certificates. And then you would actually put in a request from your firewall uh, for an intermediate certification authority so that your firewall could actually issue certificates for your web users to view websites and have that SSL scanning, which would all be under that chain. So at the top, you'd have your domains root CA, that's covered with, uh, that's provided by Microsoft's uh, certificate services and your certification authority. And then you'd have your intermediate CA certificate authority, which would be your firewall. And then underneath that, you'd have the certificates for every website you go to. So if you were doing that scanning, you know, if you went to www.google.com, your firewall would issue a certificate under that chain and it would fall under that. And one of the reasons why you would want to have your Microsoft certification authority at the top of that chain is because because it's part of the, the domain, all member servers and member computers get that root CA. And so that means that you don't have to install certificates on any of the computers as long as it's joined to the domain, that's okay. And at the same time too, this is very, very handy because when you need certificates on your internal network, you can configure Microsoft certificate templates so that your IT staff, let's say that they're configuring an IIS website or something like that, um, you know, you can just open up IIS, go to certificates, right click and request it directly from the domain controller. So you're not throwing around these requests and uh, certificate files. It's all handled under Microsoft's certificate services. So you can see where, where it, it comes into play and where it's important. Um, there's a lot of software that when you integrate it with other software, there has to be uh, encryption, which is, is handled by these SSL certificates. And so, like I said before, you wouldn't want to buy a certificate from GoDaddy or Network Solutions for this type of communication, especially since, since it's on your internal domain. However, you would want to use Microsoft's certificate services and a Microsoft certification authority to issue these certificates because your internal network will trust them and you can build those trust communication links without any problems. So with all that being said, uh, this video is part of the Windows Server 2022 series. So I figured it would be a great time to talk about the certificates and it would also be really good to show you how to actually implement this. And so for the demonstration purpose of this video, um, we're actually gonna be installing it on our domain controller. So just jumping onto my desktop here, um, if you've seen the previous videos, you'll know that TN-SRV01 is our Windows Server 2022 domain controller. Um, we have a member server, TN-SRV02, which is a member server running WSUS. 
Um, and then we have our documentation here. So you can see that we're running testnet one active directory. The domain is stevenwagner.com. Um, we have our router, our two servers. And so today with what we're going to be doing, we want to update our documentation because now TN SRV01 is going to be a certification authority. And so now that we've added that to the documentation, it's pretty simple. It's just like any other role or feature based installation on Windows Server. Technically, all we do is just go to start, fire up the good old server manager. And we just need to let this load. Then we'll go to manage, add roles and features. And I guess we didn't let it load long enough. And actually, while we wait for this to load, I'm just going to show you something here. So we're just going to open up an MMC blank window here. We're going to add a snap in. We're going to open up the certificates on the domain controller and we're going to view the computer certificates. So these certificates are preloaded by Microsoft. And we have our trusted root certification authorities. And so these are the main certificates that come preloaded with Microsoft Windows. And you'll notice that there's nothing in here pertaining to the stevenwagner.com domain. So technically we trust all the regular certificates, but we don't have our own root CA and we don't trust any third party, which is which is going to be our future root CA. And we have nothing inside of personal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, uh, to install this. We're going to go to manage, add roles and features. We're going to do a role based or feature based installation. Uh, we're going to confirm that we're installing this to tn-srv01. And if we scroll through here, you'll, or actually we don't even need to scroll. It's right at the very top of the list, Active Directory Certificate Services. And it's used to create a certification authorities and related role services that allow you to issue and manage certificates used in a variety of applications. So we're going to enable this. And it's just going to tell us that we need to install some extra features. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. We're going to go next. We don't need to touch these features. And then as soon as we go to next, you'll notice on the left-hand side of the window that the next configuration item is Active Directory Certificate Services. And so just to recap here, uh, ADCS provides the certificate infrastructure to enable scenarios such as secure wireless networks, virtual private networks, internet protocol security, IPsec VPNs, uh, NAP, and uh, encrypting file systems and smart card logins. Now keep in mind that we are creating our own root CA, so any certificates issued from this will not be trusted by any computer in the world. They will only be trusted by computers on the domain or computers that we manually install the root CA to. And that root CA will be created after we finish this installation process. And again, you know, it just came up with some more examples. VPN services, you know, let's say that you have domain based computers that want to connect to a VPN. All of that is secured with these uh, certificate services. And that's why you would actually want to use an internal root CA as opposed to purchasing these certificates. Now, some people might argue with me that installing the root CA isn't the best practice on a domain controller. Now, once you install a root CA, you don't want to have that computer name change. You don't want to have the IP change. It's just like Active Directory domain services on a domain controller. You don't want to change anything. So technically, if you were to provision a domain controller and you installed the certificate services, in my eyes, that's okay because you're never going to manipulate or change those domain controllers because essentially all you do is you keep them up to date and you don't touch them. And so that's why in my eyes, it's actually a a domain controller is a good candidate to install a uh, certification authority on. And so it just warns that the name and domain settings of this computer cannot be changed after a certification authority has been installed. So here it just asks us to select the role and services to install. Now it's been some time since I've done this manually. In previous versions of Windows Server, like Microsoft uh, Small Business Server, it would automatically install this. Um, it's been a long, long time since I've done this manually. And so I'm just going to scroll through these options and we're going to figure out which one we actually need.
Now, I always install the Certificate Enrollment Web Service because it gives you a web-based portal that allows you to submit certificate requests too. So even if your computer is not on the domain, you can open up an IIS-based website, log into it with your domain, domain credentials. And for example, if you had a firewall or an external service, a Linux box or something like that, and you generated a certificate request, you could use that IIS web-based interface to submit the request and approve and generate a certificate that you then could feed back into that service. And so I'm just, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna install that. And so we're gonna do the certificate enrollment web service and we're also gonna do the certification authority web enrollment service. And again, you'll notice that when we enable these, the add roles and features wizard pops up because since these are web-based services, we need to have IIS and we currently don't have IIS installed. So this is just warning us, telling us that we cannot install the certif certification authority web enrollment unless the following role services and features are also installed. So we're just hitting yes, we're confirming we're all good to go. And that's all we need to install. And then there's just some generic information about uh, now that we've installed those web services, we're gonna be prompted for the uh, web server role, IIS, Internet Information Service, Services or Server to be installed. And again, we're just gonna go off of the default settings here. We don't need to manipulate or change any of these. And here's just the final confirmation on how to install this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the camera. We'll let this run and I'll come back when uh, we're ready to take the next steps. Okay, so the, the roles and features have been installed now and they were done successfully. Configuration is required. So we'll just take a look at the list here. It's got everything that was installed and we have to configure Active Directory certificate services on the destination server. Now, one thing I wanna show you quickly is that I already showed you the, cert the existing certificates that are installed on the domain controller, but I wanna jump over to TN-SRV02. We're gonna open up MMC and I'm also gonna load up the certificates on there because I wanna show you what's in there and what's not. So when we, Add the computer account and take a look at the computer certificates. When we expand the list and open up the trusted root certification authorities, you'll notice that we don't have a stevenwagner.com domain root CA inside of here as of yet. So we'll jump back here and we'll continue on with the installation. So we'll configure Active Directory certificate services on the destination server. And we're gonna use the uh, domain administrator account and the role that we wanna to configure today is the certification authority. And I think for now we can leave it at that. So there's a couple different things here. So specify the setup type of the CA. So enterprise certification authorities can use Active Directory domain services to simplify the management of certificates. Standalone CAs do not use ADDS to issue or manage certificates. So if you choose enterprise CA, it will be integrated with Active Directory, whereas if you choose standalone CA, it will not be integrated with Active Directory. And this is important because you may actually, in very, very complicated scenarios or in very, very large environments, you might actually have a standalone CA that is separate from the domain as your root CA. And then you might actually set up another CA inside the domain, which is actually an intermediate root CA on that standalone, just for security purposes. We are starting to get into some really complex network design and infrastructure design. So uh, we're gonna stay away from that, but that's just an example of one of the things that would happen. But in most cases, if you had this on a domain controller and this was gonna be your root CA, you would choose enterprise CA. And so this is our very first one. So when we choose the type, we're gonna be choosing a root CA instead of a subordinate. And we're gonna create a new uh, private key. Since this is a brand new certification authority, we have to create a new key. And that's just the essentially the master key that uh, encrypts the uh, the root CA certificate. And so I think we're pretty good here with uh, choosing the default setting. So it's just going to use uh, RSA SHA two fifty six, and we're using twenty forty eight encryption. You could crank this up higher if you wanted to. And so we'll specify the name of the CA. So just to give you an idea here, so. It, these are root CAs that are issued by internet authorities. So like, you know, we've got issued to, we've got issued by, 
and we have various information about the name and what it does, SHA-256 RSA. And so what we're doing here is we're specifying the name of the new root CA. And so we're typing a common name to identify this certification authority. And uh, this name is added to all the certificates that are issued by the root CA. So now this isn't too big of a deal. Typically in the past when I've done this, I always leave it as, as default. So the common name will be Steven Wagner, which is the domain. So think of it as domain-computername-ca, which is completely fine. You could change this if you wanted to. Um, the distinguished name suffix is just a DC Steven Wagner, DC.com, which is stevenwagner.com. And then there's just a preview of the full uh, distinguished name here. So we're just gonna leave everything at default. And so here we have the validity period. And again, you can customize this, but do not change it unless you know what you're doing. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna leave it at default because that's a safe thing to do. So the root CA will be valid for a total of five years. And then we just specify our certificate database. And then it just pretty much confirms everything that we just went through. And we'll go ahead and hit configure. And the configuration succeeded. So we can close this window. Um, do we want to configure additional role services? We'll choose no. And then I think we can close out of this window. Actually, I'm just going to go through here. We do not need to do that. So now that we've installed this, if we go to start and go to Windows Administrative Tools, we should now see certification authority. And so this is what we just installed here. So you'll notice that under the certification authority, we have uh, Stephen Wagner TN SRV01CA. And when we expand this, you'll notice that we have a few different folders. We have revoked certificates, issued certificates, pending requests, failed requests and certificate templates. So what I want you to note is that we have no issued certificates and we have no pending requests. Now, I'm not too sure how long this takes to take effect, but if we jump over to TNSRV02 and we refresh this list, we still do not have the certificate. So I'm actually going to do a GP update force and restart the server and I'm wondering if it'll grab the certificate. So we'll we'll let that do that. But now if we go to the domain controller and go to MMC and then add a snap in for certificates and go to computer account, finish. And remember, we looked at this at the beginning and it only had the root internet authorities. When we go to trusted root certification authorities and certificates, You'll now notice that we have two certificates here, Stephen Wagner TN SRV01. And so, what that means is that any certificate that is issued by this new root CA that we just set up will be trusted by the system. And so, it was created October 10th, 2021, and it's valid until October 10th, 2026. And since it's trusted, this is marking the certificate as valid and OK. And we're using SHA 256, a 2048 key. And that's all good. And it's also installed inside of personal certificates as well, just because this is the domain controller that's running as the certification authority. Now with this machine, I'm just going to restart it. And so while we wait for that to re restart, there's a, a couple other things that I wanna cover here. So while we're looking at the certification authority, you'll notice that there's certificate templates. These are templates for SSL certificates that you can request from the domain. So for example, if you had IIS and you wanted to request a certificate, you'd, you would use one of these templates to request it. Um, by default, I don't think that you can actually request until you change the permission. So for example, here we have web servers. So if you wanted to request a certificate from the domain's root CA, you could use this for an Apache web server. You could use this for an IIS web server. 
um, you know, you're installing uh, VMware Horizon and you need a certificate for the Horizon web service, you could request it from here. This is the template that you would use, the web server template. However, off of a default installation, I don't believe it's available for auto enrollment. And to do that, I think we actually have to go to MMC. It's been a long time since I've done this, so cut me a little bit of slack if this isn't correct. But you'll see certificate templates here as a snap-in for MMC. So we're going to add that. And when we expand this box, you're going to see all of the different certificate templates that we can use on the domain controller. So here's web server. And if we right click on this and go to properties, you'll notice that a lot of the stuff is pre-configured. So it's a web server template. Uh, validity period is two years. Renewal is six weeks. Um, request handling, all of that is, is already configured and set up subject name, extensions, and security. So now what you can do is, uh, like if we take a look at this, authenticated users, they can read, but notice how that the enroll is not enabled. That means that a typical user could not enroll. So now let's say for a second that um, you wanted to have a template that your system administrators or your domain administrators could use to request a certificate and get it um, approved and issued from the domain. So what I would do in that case is the web server template is a good way to go, but I would right click on this and we're going to hit duplicate, duplicate template. And so what I'm going to do here is, so it's right now it's called copy of web server. We're going to call this um, SW web server template. And so now we have full, you'll notice that all of these values were not, we, we couldn't change them in the existing um, template. But now since we've duplicated it, we can. So, you know, if we wanted to, we could change the validity period to four years. Um, you know, we're going to publish the certificate in Active Directory. Uh, we have comp compatibility settings, request handling. And I think for the most part, we can leave everything as default. However, what we want to do is under security, we have domain admins. And you'll notice that now it, it automatically pre-populated this, but let's just pretend for a second it didn't. Um, we could have added domain admins here, and all we would have had to have done is just give them enroll and auto-enroll permissions. And so when a domain administrator would request a certificate from the Active Directory certif certificate services, um, they could actually auto-enroll certificates, and it would just, as soon as they throw the request in, bam, it would spit out a valid certi certificate that they could use. So enroll was already configured. We're going to add auto enroll and then we're just going to hit apply. Okay. And now you'll notice that SW web server template is available in, the, in there. And if we refresh this list, it's still not, but it is available. Trust me. So now that we've received restarted TNSRV02, I'm going to be embarrassed if this doesn't work, but technically the root CA, since this is a member server on the domain, should now be available in here. And so just after doing a GP update and restarting TNSRV02, now when we go to MMC and add the certificates for the computer, uh, under trusted root certification authorities, we now have Stephen Wagner TN SRV01-CA. So that means that any certificate that is issued is now trusted on the system, which is absolutely fantastic. And so what I want to do here is I just want to show you how easy it is to actually request a certificate from Active Directory Certificate Services and uh, how the whole process works. So you'll notice, so as I mentioned before, SRV01 is the root CA and TNSRV02 is just a member server on the domain. Now from a previous video, we actually installed WSUS on this box. So technically we should have IIS installed. So I'm gonna to go to start and we're gonna to go to administrative tools and we're gonna fire up internet information services. And I wanna show you how cool this integration is with the Active Directory certificate services. So if we open up the computer in IIS, um, you'll see here that we've got server certificates. And if my memory serves me right, what we can do here is you'll notice that there's no server certificates. On the right-hand side, we can click on, uh, I'm not too sure, well, one second. 
So I don't remember there being two, but I'm going to click on Create Domain Certificate. And so we're going to come up with a common name of uh, tn-srv02.stevenwagner.com. And we're just going to fill out this information. Hit Next. And so Online Certification Authority. Now this is, this is where it gets cool. I think we should just be able to hit Select. And here is our new Active Directory Certification Authority. It's inside the list, we hit OK. And then uh, a friendly name, this is gonna be the friendly name for the certificate. We're just gonna call it tnsrv02.stevenwagner.com. And just before I click on this, we'll jump back to the root CA. We'll go to Issued Certificates. So since we've done this, this is unrelated to anything we've done, but since we've done this, it's actually issued a certificate and you'll notice that this is a domain controller certificate. So there's a whole bunch of automated processes that run in the background. And so this is actually issued to TN-SRV01 and it's used for um, Active Directory encryption. Um, but you'll notice that there's just that one certificate. So now if we jump back to TN-SRV02, we have all this finished. We'll hit finish. And you'll notice that without even doing anything, we now have an SSL certificate in here, TNSRV02. And it was issued by Stephen Wagner, TNSRV01, and it expires October 10th, 2023. And so if we jump back to the domain controller that runs the certification authority, if we just do a quick little refresh, bam, there we go. You'll see that a web server certificate was issued. We'll just double click on this to tn-srv02.stevenwagner.com and it was issued by our new root CA. So you can see how powerful and cool this is. Everything's automated and it's all integrated. And so now if we go over and click on the certification path, you'll see the hierarchy of here's the root CA and here's the certificate that we actually just requested and generated. And so what ended up happening is that since it's all integrated and since we have auto enroll turned on and we're a domain administrator, it was automatically approved and now it's in IIS. So it's available. So if we wanted to, we could jump into default website, right click on it, go to edit bindings, create a new HTTPS binding. And you'll notice that inside of the SSL certificate list, we now have TNSRV02. So technically, you know, for example, if we jump over to WSUS, You'll notice that WSUS can either use HTTP, which has no encryption, or you can use HTTPS, which is encrypted over SSL. Since we have a certificate for that specific host name on the internal network, the one that we actually just requested, we can now click on HTTPS, click on edit, and then under the certificate, we can actually bind it to this tnsrv02. .stevenwagner.com. And this is a perfect example of why you would actually implement a root CA on an internal network as opposed to using uh, an internet authority. And again, if we go to view, we have all the details here and we can see the hierarchy of the uh, the certificate being issued from the root CA and the, and the details of the certificate. So we choose it, we select it, and that's it. So up until this point, we have added the Active Directory Certificate Services Certification Authority role to the domain controller we now have a member server that can do auto enrollment with certificates. We fired up IIS and we requested a certificate from the new root CA that we created. The root CA automatically approved it and issued it to IIS. And then we just jumped inside of IIS and we just actually uh, went to edit bindings and we attached that SSL certificate to the WSUS website. So technically we could go into group policy right now and, and let's do that just for the sake of it. So we'll go to the domain controller and we'll go to group policy management. And so we'll just go to the WSUS GPO that we created in a previous video. And what we want to do now is now that we can use SSL on WSUS, we need to update the policies. And now I should have these remembered, but I don't. So I'm just going to generate a report to find out where this is stored. So we have to go to Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates, Windows Components.
And so here's where we have the configuration for WSUS. So now that we're using SSL, we would just go to specify internet Microsoft update services location. And you'll see that it's using the old URL of HTTP colon slash slash TNSRV02 and with the old non-SSL port. Now keep in mind that the certificate that we generated, it you can configure something called a SAN. And a SAN, not in storage, but a SAN with certificate stands for subject alternative name. And so what you can do is you can actually have a single certificate with multiple SANs. So you can have a couple fully qualified domain names, you can have a couple computer names, and you can put everything under one certificate. We did not do that in that specific certificate request, but it is possible. So because this certificate, if we jump back here, is only issued for a single host name, that means that any service that wants to connect to it has to validate against that tn-srv02 stevenwagner.com and because of that we can no longer use just the computer name so we have to update this to include the fully qualified internal domain name so first we're going to change it to https tnsrv02 dot stevenwagner.com and then we're also going to change it for the intranet statistics servers so again we're going to add h the s after the p and we're gonna type in the fully qualified domain. Now, one thing that we forgot to do, not really forgot, but I just wanted to put an emphasis on this, is that since we're using SSL now, it runs on a different port. So you'll notice that HTTP runs on 8530, and now we're using 8531 for HTTPS, so we'll just gonna update that as well. And then we'll just go ahead and close the window. I'm just going to open that back up, make sure it's safe. No, it did not save. Okay, so just to save you some pain here, I'm going to do this quickly. That's good. And the reason why that didn't save is because we have to hit apply and OK. We're going to close that. Close that. And so now, Whenever you do any type of configuration change on IIS, technically a lot of it does happen in real time, but you should always restart IIS. So you can do that either by clicking on restart on the side here, or what I like to do is just fire open a command prompt, run it as administrator, and you just type in IIS reset. And voila, that's how you configure WSUS to use an SSL certificate generated from an Active Directory Certificate Services root certification authority. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment, ask me any question you like, I'll do my best to get back to them. Um, if not, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a fantastic day.